guys so today we are going to make heat press pillows and if you've ever looked heat press pillows can be very expensive to purchase already made so I'm going to show you how to make your own and these are used with your heat press when you're pressing things like uh, a onesie or a button-down shirt with buttons or if you're pressing a tote bag that's got the straps that go all the way down anything that's going to prevent your platens from from creating equal pressure across your whole pressing area. It's really important that you have that equal pressure and that contact with that upper platen so that your heat transfer vinyl is going to adhere to what you're wanting it to stick to. So here's a couple that I've made in the past and I use these all the time. I use this one with onesies a lot or inside bags and this one pretty much anything else. But we're going to make a few and some of the common sizes that you're going to find in heat press pillows are a 6x8, which is going to be your onesies and your small items, a 5x18, which is going to be for like sleeves and pant legs, a 10x10, 12x14 are pretty common. If you have a press that's larger than 15x15, 15 15, you're going to want to have one that's maybe a 16x20 or 16x24, it just depends on the size of your press. So what I have here is a one yard of high density foam and this is from Joann's and I will post a link to it and if you buy it in the store you can buy it off the roll. If you have to buy it online you have to buy it two and a half yards at a time. So I went up there today and got some of this high density foam. It's made by Airtex. It is $12.99 a yard. I got one yard and I used my 30% off coupon so I got it for $9.09 .09 for one yard. And it's 24 inches wide and 36 inches long. Then you need ironing board fabric. Not the quilted kind. Do not get the quilted. If you make your heat press pillow with quilted fabric, you run the risk of that quilted pattern showing through in your heat transfer vinyl and also interfering with that even pressure that you're trying to get. So this is normally $9.99 a yard, and it was on sale 30% off. So it was $6.99 a yard. I got a yard and a half, plus I used a 25% off coupon. So I got one and a half yards for $7.87. So my investment today is $16.96. Of course, tax would be extra, but $17 to make several heat press pillows is a really, really good deal. If you've looked at them online, you'll see that they range anywhere from like $15 for a six by eight up to $40, $45 for a 16 by 20. Even the 12 by 14 is gonna run you $25, $30. So for the price of one small heat press pillow, I'm gonna be able to make an entire set that I can use. I might even have a little leftover. So that's a really good deal. So what we want to do is, oh, I did also, you can make these out of Teflon. Again, one and a half yards for $7.87. The best deal that I found buying these on their own is to buy on Amazon. You can get five of them for $10. I think they're maybe a 16 by 20 size, which which is what this one is. So five of those for $10. Definitely not gonna get the same uh, value out of these. If you can buy Teflon by the roll uh, it's, or, or by the yard, it's gonna cost you a lot more. So this is definitely a less expensive option. Also think that the ironing board cover um, sews a lot easier. This is in the utility fabric section and in my Joann's is in the very, very, very back row. So that's back there. So what we're going to do is cut these down and you can kind of try to plan it out and nest your shapes um, the best way that's going to work for you. Of course we're 24 inches across and so let's do our first one, let's do the 5 by 18. So we want to come in 5 inches here. And we want to mark it. 
So I'm just going to mark it up at 5 inches. And I'm just using a Sharpie. It's going to get covered with the fabric so it doesn't matter. Just mark it a couple places there at 5 inches. And then I want to measure in 18 inches. And this is my absolute favorite uh, lip edge ruler that I talk about all the time. So we're going to go here. So I'm just going to drag my Sharpie across. Doesn't need to be anything fancy, just enough that you know where to cut. And our five inches here. So there's our first one. So we have a few inches left over down here on the end. So we could do a six by eight here. So let's carry this one in. About lined up. I'm going to carry that into eight inches. I love this because I can see through it so I can line up that line here. Make a six by eight there. And then we wanted to do a uh, so we got six by eight, five by eighteen. I do want to make a 16 by 24. So what I'm going to do is come down and go across here. I love this lip edge because as long as that lip, you see the lip that's on there, that lip right there on the edge of the ruler will nestle up against the side of your cutting mat, whatever it is you're using, so that you, you know that you're getting a, a, a straight line at right angle. And these are the common sizes. If you were gonna go buy the Caesar brand heat transfer pillows this is what you would be getting so on this one 24 inch by yard piece of foam I have a 12 by 14 a 10 by 10 a 16 by 24 a 6 by 8 and a 5 by 18 those five heat presses purchased together would cost you at least $125 if you were buying them retail so I'm going to grab my fabric scissors and I'm just going to cut these apart. You can use a hot knife, you can use a rotary cutter, you can use whatever you want. I have found in the ones that I've made that my fabric scissors do a bang up job. This is a half inch high density foam. So it's not super thick, it's easy to cut through. So then what I do is with my fabric, not quite halvesies here. So I'm just gonna get that folded in half. So what I do, is let's take this leg one here and I'm just gonna line this up and I want to allow myself kind of a seam allowance so that I have room to close it and I don't mind trimming it off when it's done but this is gonna be perfect so I'm just gonna take my fabric scissors And cut it right down. Again, these are press, pressing pillows that are going to go in my basement with my heat press. Nobody's going to see them. I'm not super, super concerned about that perfect edge, but you could definitely use a rotary cutter or mark you at a line or something before you before you start with that. Okay, 
So, we now have our fabric cut, and then we're going to go sew. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the fabric here, I'm going to fold it over. You could do two separate pieces and seam it up on all four sides, but um, this is about saving time, saving money, time is money, uh, and all of that stuff. So I'm just going to take it and I'm going to sew it up on the three sides, trim off the edges, and that's it. Okay, so I am, by no stretch of the imagination, an expert on a sewing machine. I, uh, I'm lucky if I can sew a straight line. I'm lucky if I can get the machine to work for an entire project before I jam it up. So, just bear with me here. And, I mean, this isn't even my sewing machine. So, borrow one from your mom, from your grandma, from your friend. They even have really inexpensive ones online on Amazon. They've got one that's like $30. But when you spend less than $20 on the materials and $30 on a sewing machine, you're still at $50, less than half of what you would pay to buy a full set of these online. Even if you find a cheap set for $80. So please take my advice as that of um, I'm assuming that you know even less than I do about sewing, <laughs> and we're going to go from there. So we want to start by putting it in reverse. Aha, let's turn it on. Yeah, I told you, I'm a pro. And push that foam down while you're doing it. sure that you're staying straight. Don't want to end up with no seam on the left side. No room for a seam. To it so it doesn't slip out of position and turn and you can you can sew it up on two sides and then put the foam inside and I tried that what I learned was that the foam is so um, textured that it does not slide in very easily and it was less effort to try to sew around the foam than it was to put the foam into the um, into the item. down in the fabric when you lift up the foot to spin it around and that'll keep it from shifting out of place and then put your foot back down and finish it off And I'm going to trim off my edges. Okay. 
And I'm using this blue thread because it's what's in my machine. It's my favorite color. And again, I'm the only one that's going to see these, except for all of you guys. And I just think it's pretty. Snip off those pieces of thread. And ta-da, we have a pressing pillow. And is it perfect? Absolutely not. Is it going to get the job done? Yes, most definitely. So. And moving right along, I'm gonna do the next one. As you can see, I am a fantastic seamstress. <laughs> Those of you that are watching and know how to sew properly, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. And got two more to go. We have our large press pillow. It's as big as our press. And then we have a 12 by 14, which is great. Uh, for If you have a press that's 15 by 15 or smaller, this is probably the biggest one that you're gonna need. But this is great for button down shirts, polo shirts. You can even fit a whole onesie on here of uh, the smaller ones. Uh, tote bags that have straps on them. Um, anything like that that you need to press and you need to have that uh, that cushion under there to, to make it even pressure. And then we have a 10 by 10, we have a 6 by 8, and we have our, uh, I believe this was 5 by 18, which is good for um, sleeves, pant legs, and things like that. So we did all of that with one yard of high density 100% um, polyester foam and a yard and a half of the ironing board cover from Joann's. It cost me, what was my total? $16.96 plus tax for all of this. Uh, I already had the sewing machine and the thread, so it just took a little bit of my time, uh, maybe a little over an hour to cut and sew everything, and that includes talking to you guys and moving lights and, and filming equipment around. So. Uh, you could definitely do this in an hour, hour and a half, and I am not a um, expert sewer by any stretch of the imagination. If you were to come and inspect my seams, they're, they're really ugly, but they're going to hold it together, and that's what matters. So if you guys have any questions, of course, just let me know, unless it's about sewing. Thanks, guys.